amen, in the midst of us, amen, on today. We thank God. Oh, man, first thing, God, amen, for the choir, amen. Thank God for the choir, amen. We thank God for his spirit, amen, being in the midst of us on this morning, amen. I don't know if you've heard, amen, but whatever trouble you're going through, whatever it is that you're facing, the spirit of the Lord is able to fix whatever concern. The Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, whichever of those two you like to refer to him as, is able to correct and fix any issue, problem you may be facing on this morning. I don't care what type of baggage you brought with you on this morning, amen. We pray that by the time that you leave, amen, that amen, whatever baggage you brought with you, amen, had to flee and get away, amen, by the power of the Holy Ghost, amen. So we thank God for his presence being in the midst of us. We thank God for none other than our very own, amen, Apostle Janice M. Perkins, the angel of the house, amen. Thank God for her, amen, the mighty woman of God. Thank God for her, amen, and her, her leadership. I tell you, if you've been pressing your way on Tuesdays, you know, the series that she's been teaching on faith, man of God, oh, that faith. I told you we've heard the woman of God <clears throat> Break the word down quite a bit, but it's something about faith. Man, that faith will take you to higher heights and deeper depths, amen. So we thank God, amen, for the tutelage of, amen, the angel of the house. We thank God for co-pastor Latika Mitchell as well, amen. Thank God for her, her leadership, her faithfulness, amen, to the call of the gospel, amen. We thank God as well for, amen, assistant pastor Bruce Baker Jr., amen. We thank God for him as well. Amen. I thank God. Amen. We thank God for everybody in their respectable places. We thank God for all the mothers. Thank God for Mother Jeannie coming out and being with us on this morning. Thank God. Put your hands together, Mother. It's so good to see you on this morning. Amen. All of our visitors, everybody in your respectable places, thank you. You have your seats, amen. You have your seats in the presence of the Lord and uh, well, wait a second, amen, let's, 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 let's get those Bibles in our hands, we get those, amen, y'all was going to let me forget, amen, hallelujah, let's get those Bibles in our hands, let's lift them up to heaven, amen, hallelujah, I want you to repeat after me, this is the infallible word of God, that I live by, that shall bring me into the fullness of God, that my soul doesn't rest in hell, but rest in eternity in heaven, which will be, which will be, which will be my final destination. Amen. You can have your seats. Amen. Praise the Lord. I am not going to be before you long. Amen. Praise God. I do plan to let the Holy Spirit have his way, amen. I'm going to give you just what the Holy Spirit gave me, and I am going to get out of your way. You know, I've been heard, you know, that I'm long-winded. I don't think I am, but you know, hey, 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 nevertheless, amen. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit have his way, and I'm going to get out your way, amen. So y'all ain't even praying, man. Y'all y'all to praise God, amen. This word will come for get out your way, amen. All right, praise God, hallelujah. I'm joy, man, I'm excited, man, I'm saved. Can we just talk on this morning? I'm saved, man. I ain't here. I ain't up here to point no finger. I'm better than you. I'm just glad to be saved, brother and sister Johnson. Because I remember when and where I was. And if truth be told, I know where the enemy can try to take me on a day-to-day -day basis, even now in the current. But the Holy Spirit gives me the power to tell sin no. Brother Ramos, the Holy Spirit has given me power the things I used to be addicted to, I'm not addicted to anymore. How depression was such a stronghold, I don't have to live in depression anymore. Oh, man, y'all thank you, somebody, amen. Uh, perversion was such a stronghold. My mind, I've got power over my mind through the Holy Spirit. That's why I praise God. That's why I'm so thankful to be in his house. That's why no matter if my praise, my praise don't have to look like your praise as long as it's coming from the heart. 
Oh, I know when I come into his, into his courts, I'm coming with thanksgiving. It ain't got to look like your thanksgiving, but I'm joyful. Because I know where I was. I know who I was. I'm not oblivious to who I was, who this flesh is and who this flesh used to be. But I thank God that I have a used to. I thank God I got a used to. Because, boy, some of y'all act like you don't know what it means to be entrapped in something for so many years that you really, your spirit, know you shouldn't be entrapped in. To be entangled in bondage for so long as something on the inside of you is crying out, I want to be free. But when the addiction calls, you just got to answer. Boy, y'all ain't talking to me on this morning. I feel good in my spirit because I'm free. I'm free. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is liberty. I don't know about you. Oh, but I'm glad that I grabbed hold of that liberty. I ain't got to walk in anger and malice anymore, unforgiveness anymore. I'm thankful. Oh, he's a great God. Let's get into this word, amen. We're looking at separation. We're looking at separation. A lot of people, when we hear the word separation or separating, we begin to get fearful. We get anxiety attacks. We get wearyful because we think, oh, God, I'm going to have to separate from that relationship that I've had forever. And, you know, just like the man of God was talking about in Sunday school on this morning, I may have to do some separation from some money. Oh, I may have to separate from some funds, and oh, I may have to separate from some pleasures, some things of this life that used to bring me so much joy. But I'm here to tell you that in this walk with Christ, can I talk to you on this morning? Y'all know I don't plan on doing too much hooping and hollering. I, 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 when it comes to separation, when it comes to separation, it is one of the most vital points in a child of God's life separating but see the thing about it is we're not just separating for anything we're separating for the glory of God see a lot of people were separating from people we're separating from churches we're separating from family we're separating from the things that God has called us to oh God back into the shadows of what we were addicted to to the things that bring us pleasure we've separated from the church because of church hurt and we went back into alcohol and we went back into smoking and we've been back into fornication and we've been back into anger and back into depression and suicidal thoughts and we've gone back into the strongholds of the enemy but but when you're separating for a purpose, I'm here to tell you that it's going to be worth it in the end if you faint not. See, we're not separating for any just blank cause. We're separating for the glory of God. Do I got somebody in the house on this morning? You can look back over your life the past couple of years, and you can see where. I've made some separation from some family. I've made some separation from some jobs. I've made some separation even from people in the church. Oh, God. God, for the glory of God. See, y'all ain't going to talk to me on this morning. I'm here to tell you that we're looking at separating for the glory versus the dangers of the crowd. We live in a society where everything and everybody is consumed by the crowd. Consume everything that you see these days is a carbon copy of what everybody else is doing. And the world looks at the church and the world thinks that it's so original. But when you look out into the world, it's devices, everything. The Bible says that there is nothing new that can be found under the sun. But the world will look at us, look down on us. But at the end of the day, I'm here to tell you that there is nothing but a carbon copy of uh, things that have been from times before. We're looking at separating for the glory of God. 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. It tells us, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? I'm here to tell you on this morning that when the Bible speaks about be ye not unequally yoked, it's not just talking about walking past the unbelievers on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not talking about, amen, staying away, oh God, from certain people in the grocery store, not walking down certain aisles because a person, quote unquote, looks like a sinner, quote unquote, looks like 
They don't look like a heathen. It looks like, no, we're not talking about what they look like. But when the Bible talks about be ye not unequally yoked, it talks about creating relationships with the unbeliever. See, too many times in our lives, a lot of us are in trouble in the house of God because it's not just that we're sitting in the midst of them, but it's just the fact that we create relationships. We create relationships with our sins. We create relationships with people that don't love God. We create relationships with people that are contradictory uh, to the word of God, that are hypocrites. We create these relationships, and these relationships create bonds. And then when it comes time for God to come in and do a work in your life, it's harder to let them go because you built a relationship. You ever been in a relationship with somebody, it may have been friends or it may have been a romantic relationship, and you didn't want to get too deep into the relationship because you knew this thing really wasn't going to go too far. It was just going to be a fun relationship, but then as you hung around the person more and more and your feelings got deeper and deeper involved, you found yourself harder to cut away from them, and you began to just deal with some stuff because, well, I guess, you know, I feel like I love this person. And I've been with them for so long. You see so many people in common law marriages, not because they love the person, but just because they've been around them for so long. I'm here to tell you on this morning a lot of things that you're dealing with in your life that is there that has uh, wrapped its arm around you to bring you comfort and joy. I'm here to tell you you're only in that relationship because you've been with it for so long. And you don't know what it really means to be free. Am I talking to somebody on this morning? Oh, God, you've been in a relationship with anger for so long. And anger has been a comfort to you for so long. You don't know what it really means like to be free, so you know that you're tired of walking around being angry. I'm tired of being upset for no reason. I'm tired, Lord, of where's my joy? Where's my happiness? Oh, God, but I've been in this thing for so long, and it's brought me so much comfort that I just, I, I'm scared truly, and I'm, honestly, I'm scared to try something else. I'm mean, here to tell you that whatever it is, amen, it may be alcohol addiction, it may be smoking, drinking, whatever the case is, this is why we have to be so careful of the relationships that we build with people. And the Bible tells us don't be yoked up with the unbelievers because they're there to be a stumbling block to your uh, progress. They're there to be a stumbling block and a hindrance to your growth. But it's something about, amen, when it comes to separating for the glory of God, that we come in and get a touch and a tingle of God, and we feel like we can go right back around and hang with the whole family. And the pastor's laid hands on us, and we've been prayed for, and the oil's been anointed upon our heads, and we feel like Superman and Superwoman, and we go right back out into the midst of the danger, right back out into the midst of the jungle, and we wonder why the danger is right back at our doorstep, people of God. The Bible tells us don't be unequally yoked with the unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion hath light with darkness, people of God? Hear me on this morning. We're going to look at three examples of separating for the glory of God. I want you to go with me to the book of Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. We're going to look at these three examples, and I'm going to get out of your way. Hallelujah. There's three examples, three situations. Amen. I'm, I'm, I just want to encourage somebody on this morning. You don't have to be fearful of separation. The world speaks about separation anxiety. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be separated from my yesterday. Oh, boy, I don't know about you, my sister, but I'm glad to be separated, oh, God, from depression. I'm glad to be separated from pornography. I'm glad to be separated from weed. I'm glad to be separated from alcohol. I'm glad to be separated from suicidal thoughts. I'm glad to be separated from wanting to be a thug in these streets. I'm glad to be separated. I'm glad about it. I'm glad to be separated from flirtatiousness. I'm glad to be separated. Y'all ain't talking to me on this morning. I'm glad to be separated from selfishness. I was selfish in my marriage. I was selfish when it came to church. I was separate, oh God, selfish when it came to my leaders. I was selfish when it came to being there for some of y'all. I was selfish, but I'm glad to be separated. Oh God, hallelujah. The Bible tells us to be separated, saith the Lord. Oh, I'm glad to be separated on this morning. Hallelujah. 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 
Oh, my, 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 hallelujah. We're looking at Exodus 3, chapter 1. Exodus chapter 3, beginning in verse 1, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible says, amen, that we find Moses. It says, now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. The Bible says, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert. The Bible says, and he came to the mountain of God even to Horab. Now see, the first thing that I want you to understand, the Holy Spirit began to bring to my understanding that when it comes to work, the Bible says that for the glory of God, sometimes people of God, you have to be willing to separate yourself from the day-to-day -day monotony and chaos, amen, that comes with work. Sometimes we can get so caught up in work we can get so caught up in work that we can put God on the back burner. Come on, somebody talk to me. We can get so caught up, amen, with work and what goes on at the job and how frustrating things are at the job or how hard it is to find the job. And, oh, God, uh, it's so hard, amen, to make ends meet. But I'm here to tell you that when you separate for the glory of God, there is nothing that will stand in your way, nothing that's too good that I can't cut it off to be used for God's glory. We find in Exodus chapter 3, verse 1, Moses in the middle of the flock, keeping the flock of his father-in-law. The Bible says, and as he was keeping the flock, he began to lead them, and he brought them around to the backside of the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the Bible says here in verse 2, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And the Bible says, and he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Now, see, we've heard this story, and we've seen, and we've, we've talked about the miracle of the burning bush, but I'm here to tell you that even in the midst, amen, of work, Moses had to take a detour in the midst of his job. And as Moses took this detour in the midst of his job, he didn't just take a detour or come to a place of separation for any old cause, but he took a separation and found himself in the place where the glory of God rests. Now, see, I want you to understand that the Bible says that when he found himself on the backside of the mountain, the Mount of God, amen, this is where, amen, miracle signs and wonders, amen, were going to be done. And I want you to understand a lot of us are separating for just any old cause. When you're separating to be where the glory of God is. He's able to shine upon that sacrifice. I want you to see here that he took a detour at work while he was in the midst of shepherding the sheep. And the Bible says he found himself on the backside of the mountain. And the Bible says that the glory of the Lord began to come in the form of the burning bush. And he looked in amazement because I see this bush and it's burning, it's on fire, but it's not consumed. And I want you to know and understand that as you take those detours and you, you press and you separate from the day-to-day -day chaos to be one with God, I'm here to tell you that, amen, you've got to separate and press your way, amen, to be where his glory rests. A lot of us, we separate, amen, to go and have a little bit more time in the bed. We separate, amen, to have a little bit more time with hubby and wifey. Oh, Lord, y'all not talking to me on this morning. We separate because I feel like I've been at church, oh, God, all week long, and I just need just a little bit of rest. We, 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 we put a separation between the place where the presence of God is when we need to be running to him. The Bible says that in the midst of his work, the Bible says that he began to uh, make a detour and he went to the Mount of God. But I want you to know and understand that when you separate, oh God, in certain things, even in work, it begins to make your life clear for God to begin to reveal the, the, the journey of life and what he wants to do in your life. If you look later down in verses 3, or excuse me, in verses 7 and 10, the Bible says, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Verse 10 says, Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Listen to me, people of God. If Moses had not taken that detour, even in the midst of his job, we feel like sometimes when that job call, we got to run an answer. They tell you it's overtime, and boy, you're the first one with your name on the list. 
you the first one in that email talking about sign me up. Boy, am I talking to somebody on this morning because we'd rather be, amen, getting the natural money, amen, than to be where the presence of God is. And we begin to get our priorities mixed up to the place where we're running to the job, amen, instead of running to the place where the presence is. See, Moses, I'm trying to help you on this morning. Moses could have led them sheep to a lot of different places. But the Bible says that he led them to the backside of the mount of God because I need to get to where the presence of the Lord is. And when he made his way to where the presence of the Lord is, we seen that the burning bush began to, uh, began to be there in the midst of him. And he saw it in amazement. I just don't understand why this thing has not been consumed. For those, when you make the sacrifice to press your way to the house of God and you see all type of hell and chaos going on around you, but you see your life is not consumed, you ought to begin to praise God. Because if I could press my way to where the presence of the Lord is, I know that he's a keeper. I know he's a keeper. You ever been in that place where you could have been somewhere else, but when you pressed your way to where the presence of the Lord is, oh God, everything that looked like it was going to tear you apart came together. Everything that looked like it was going to bring you to your knees actually made you stronger oh my 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 the bible says in verses 7 and 10 god revealed to him and told him i will send thee unto pharaoh that thou mayest bring forth my people the children of israel out of egypt it wasn't until he separated from his original plans and took this detour for the glory of god that god was able to reveal to him what i want to do in your life how many of us, God has been trying to call you and detour you for so long? God been trying to get you to be more dedicated, trying to get you more tapped in, trying to bring you to a place where you can find joy and get you to be excited about coming in the house of the Lord and get you, amen, to where it's a, a joy and not a burden. But it becomes, uh, we come to a place where we look at it the opposite. We look at work. We ready to go to work, but it, it's a burden to come to the house of the Lord. We'd rather put in work on a man's clock that's only going to give you an earthly reward. But we come to the house of the Lord and we complain, we mumble, we have an attitude. We don't want to praise God. We come, we've got it completely backwards and we wonder why God is unable to reveal what he wants to do in our life. You've been asking God, God, what is it that you want to do with me? Been saved for so long. I've known you for so long, God. I've been coming to church faithfully for so long. But, but God, what do, what do you want to do with me? There's a certain level of separation from this world that God is requiring of us, people of God. Oh, man, hallelujah. I'm excited about it. Uh, as we look, amen, even let's go to the book of Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9 and 28. Sometimes, amen, when it comes to separating for the glory of God, we've got to bring that same mindset into the house of God. And you've got to separate from certain people, even in the ministry. Boy, am I talking to somebody in the house on this morning. We've got to separate, amen, even from certain friendships, certain relationships, and things in the house of the Lord. Why? Because they don't mean our growth and progression any good. Oh, God, Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, Luke chapter 9, Luke chapter 9 and verse 28, Luke chapter 9 and verse 28 beginning, and it reads, and it came to pass about in eight days after these sayings, talking about Jesus, the Bible says he took Peter, John, and James, the Bible says, and he went up into a mountain to pray, first point of separation here, we find him walking with the disciples, but Jesus had to separate, amen, and go off to find a place to pray. Make note of this, amen, we're looking at separating even in the ministry for the glory of God. Are you with me on this morning? Amen, so we find here, amen, he took Peter and John and James and went up into the mountain to pray. The Bible says in verse 29, and as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. The Bible says, and his raiment was white and glistening. The Bible says, and behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias. And verse 31, who appeared in glory. The Bible says, and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. Listen to me, people of God. Sometimes, even when it comes to the purpose of ministry, 
and those that we walk side by side in the house of God. There are going to be seasons and points and times where you're going to have to separate, take a detour. You're going to have to cut yourself off that it can just be a one-on-one -on -one relationship with you and God. Listen to me and understand me. We find here in the text that Jesus, when he separated and he began to go up to the top of the mountain to pray, the Bible says that as they begin to look upon him, his raiment began to change. The Bible says his appearance began to change. My, 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 my. Things begin to get a little bit different, amen, when he separated and cut himself off from those that he had been walking with for quite a while, amen. And the Bible says that there, when we see the change, it's, uh, it's in the same type of relevance as the glory of God. And you feel like because, amen, we've been walking in ministry together for so long and I tell them all my secrets, they tell me all of, uh, they tell me all of theirs and we're so close. We bring that same relationship from the world into the church. We come into the church and we come into the ministry and we forget that we're dealing with broken people. We bring the same mindset into ministry and you forget that you are dealing with broken people that are coming, trying to be healed and put together by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we come and we relay all of our mess and we come into the kingdom of God looking for a friend rather than looking for a savior. We come into the house of God and that's why the house of God has become so messy. That's why church has become so political. That's why church has become a, a, an entertaining experience more than a day-to-day -day worship experience with God because we're coming into the house of God, bringing our baggage, and we're coming into the house of God looking for friendships, coming into the house of God looking for the next gossip, looking for the next thing to talk about, talking about the sister and how she dressed, talking about the brother and what he looked like, talking about how praise and worship sang, talking about how this sister didn't do the media right, talking about this and that about the kitchen talking about this and that about the word oh I didn't like the song pastor saying oh I didn't like how apostle preached oh I didn't like this and that well even Jesus had to separate himself from people he had been walking with for so long for a moment because I need the glory to be evident in my life and see, the glory can't become evident in your life because you still held on to these relationships and you refuse to separate yourself from the for the glory of God. You refuse to separate yourself from the people that the glory can be seen in your life. See, this is the thing that we forget, people of God. It does not take God all day. The Holy Spirit, it does not take the Holy Spirit all day to do a work. It does not take the Holy Spirit. Do I got anybody in here that you are a witness, amen, to how fast, amen, the Holy Spirit can do a work in your life? Do I got somebody in the house on this morning you can be a witness to say, I'm not who I used to be, and it didn't take me 12 years. It didn't take me 12 years. It didn't take me 12 years to clean my mouth up and stop cussing. It didn't. It didn't. It didn't take me, it didn't take me 30 years to stop wanting to fornicate. It didn't take me, you know, five years to doggone stop just, just fiending for a blunt just to get some peace. It ain't take me five years for that. But I just had to come to a place where I was ready to separate and cut off them things that were not like God. See, people of God, it's all about sacrifice. It's about sacrifice. We find first Moses uh, making a sacrifice and detouring on his job to get to where the presence of God is. Now we find Jesus in the midst of the ministry separating that I can climb up and the glory of God can be seen in the midst of me. Oh, my God. And in verse 34 and 35 of that same chapter, Luke 9, we find here that uh, verse 34, while he thus spake, there came a cloud. Still looking at the glory. The Bible says a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. The Bible says in verse 35, and there came a voice out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son. Hear him. Hear him. Think about our lives on today. Think about where you are and think about how God wants to use you. Think about how God is just sitting back waiting on the point where he can tell somebody else, hear him. Hear her. Because she's made the, the, the sacrifice to separate. He's made the sacrifice to separate. He's done what is needed to cut off those things that are not like God. I want you to hear him. But it's only after the glory of God was able to surround him because he separated. 
I need you to understand, people of God, that this world is going to try to hold on to you, but this world is evil. This world is evil. You can look in a day-to-day -day basis. You can look at how this world is moving, how it's operating things, laws that are getting passed, laws that are getting put out against the church. You can look and you can find, I don't understand how anybody could want to be a friend of this world these days. The world, we're living in a world where the, the, the family as it has been seen as man and wife and child is being ostracized and being looked at as a problem. We're living in a generation where people are getting more and more dependent on themselves and further and further from God. We are in the midst of a generation, people of God, where we are being taught to be dependent on substances rather than to be dependent upon the Holy Spirit. We are living in a generation where we are taught to be dependent upon people, places, and things. And that means something. That makes you have status. That, uh, because of the amount of things that you have, that makes you uh, uh, um, a special person. That makes you a good person. But I'm here to tell you, the Bible says that what does it profit a man to gain his whole world and to lose his very own soul? See, this world is evil, people of God. And we cannot be caught up. We've got to separate from the ways and the teachings of the world. The Bible says in verse 1 John 5 and 19, we know that we are of God and the whole world is under the sway of the evil one. The whole world is under the sway. The whole world lieth in wickedness. The wicked one. But we continuously run to the world day after day for peace. We continue to have friends and fellowship with people that don't love God. And we refuse to come in and allow the Holy Spirit to give us the strength to separate. We continue to go through these day-to-day -day relationships that we build with people, places, and things. And we are, we're afraid that if we take a detour for the Holy Spirit, we're afraid that we're going to lose something. We're afraid. That if we stop going out with our friends to the parties like we used to, there's, there's something that, that we're going to miss that's vital in our life. We're afraid that, that if, we, if we tell that boyfriend or that girlfriend, hey, look, we can't sleep together. We're not married anymore. We're afraid that if we lose them, that's the best thing that's ever going to happen to us. And we're never going to find something else. Even to go a step above that in our marriage, we're afraid to tell that husband or wife that don't love God, hey, if you don't see God the way that I see God, if you're not trying to walk hand in hand with God with me. We're afraid that if they leave us and walk away that we'll never find another. But I'm here to tell you people of God that if you are walking and you are willing to separate and sacrifice for the glory of God, I'm here to tell you that there is no loss that you will take in the kingdom that he will not repay you double for your trouble. The enemy plays off of fear. Some of us in here are afraid to stop smoking because if we stop smoking, I'm going to have to look in the mirror and really see what type of a mess I am. We're afraid to stop drinking because if I stop drinking, I don't know where I'm going to get some more joy from. We afraid, amen, to, to, to stop going out clubbing and partying and be in the, in the midst of where people are because, God, I just, you know, I, this group of friends have been so loyal to me and I just, I don't know if I lose these friends, will I ever find another? We looked at on a couple of weeks ago, there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. We, 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 this friend that I'm talking about is the Holy Spirit. I'm here to let you know that in the midst of your troubles, whatever you lose, Whatever you sacrifice for the glory of God, I'm here to tell you that the payoff will be worth it. Oh, people of God, hallelujah. And the last thing that we're going to look at on this morning is probably the most touchy of them all, being separate from family. Boy, y'all ain't talking to me on this morning. Y'all, like I ain't talking from experience. I'm talking from experience. Sometimes the enemy knows just what and who to use to keep you from getting to that place in glory that he has set for you. And I'm here to tell you, amen, that sometimes even in this walk with God, there has to come a point, amen, of separation even in the midst of family. And I need you to follow me with this last point, amen. 
Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 1 and 22. 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 22. Hallelujah. 1 Samuel 1 and 22. We find Hannah in the midst of giving birth to Samuel. Hallelujah. This was probably my favorite point out of all of these. Oh, Holy Spirit, you still amaze me no matter how many times you read this word. Sometimes you read the word, sometimes you just think, you know, I don't know what else could kind of surprise me. But then you read it, you be like, wow, Holy Spirit, you just, this is why the word can never be boring. The Spirit of God bring it alive. You got to look, th- read the word through the Spirit of God that it comes alive. Let's look at the scripture, amen, and I get out your way. In 1 Samuel chapter 1 and 22, we find Hannah. And the Bible says, but Hannah went not up. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, for she said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child be weaned. And then I will bring him that he may appear before the Lord. This is what I need you to understand, people of God. These situations and things in your life that are there to push you to a point of finally being willing to separate. Is all for the glory of God. I need you to understand a lot of times we can look at our past. We can look at what we've been through. We can look at the ups and the downs. We can look at what we deem as failures. Uh, We can look at what we deem as losses. We can look at things that have happened to us. Tragedies, traumas, things that we've experienced in our day-to-day lives. And we can look at them and we can look down on these situations and we can get to a place where we're almost looking for pity upon ourselves. We're looking for somebody to have pity upon me because of my story. To have pity upon me because you don't know what I've been through. You're looking for somebody to have pity upon you because you was molested as a child. I'm here to tell you that in this world that we live in, this this world is about out of pity. And you're looking and you're talking to a group of people where everybody that you are talking to is broken just like you. And we're looking and we're sitting in the midst of people and we're trying to get life from people that are dead themselves. And we're trying to pull life from family members that don't know God themselves. And we're trying to pull that next level of glory out of a mother and a father that is still stuck in bondage Like we stuck in bondage. I'm here to tell you cousins and aunties and uncles and brothers and sisters. I'm here to tell you that the Bible and God, the Holy Spirit, has no respect of person. Even when it comes down to your family, there are points that you have to separate. But I'm going to tie it back into the scripture. Amen. See, we find here that Hannah, with baby Samuel, knew what she had to do. She had to offer him up to the Lord. Because she had put a word. She had put a word out there. That she was going to do that. That she was going to offer. That she was going to give this child back to the Lord. But what I loved about it when I read the scripture was right there in the middle when she said that I, she told her husband, I will not go up until the child be weaned. And when I read this, I began to say, wow, God, so you're telling me, God, that your patience It's so amazing. Your patience, your grace, and your mercy is so amazing to the place where you're a God. If you wanted to, you could have just called the baby out right then and there, and you could have made provision. But no, you allowed the mother time to wean the baby. So, God, you're telling me that sometimes in life, God, there are circumstances, there are situations in our lives that you are going to allow us to go through, not because, amen, you just want to see us go through and struggle, but because these situations that we're going through is going to push us, amen, and propel us into, amen, a future of being dependent from, uh, from being dependent on people to being dependent on God. Oh, Lord, I see something. I told you, I'm going to bring this thing all around. Hallelujah. See, man, a lot of times, amen, we want to rush the process and we want to jump over the mistakes. We want to jump over the natural situations that we had to go through. 
And you look down on yourself because your marriage didn't go well. You look down on yourself because the kids didn't turn out the way that you thought they should. You look down on yourself because the job didn't work out the way you thought it should. But what if I was here to tell you that God allowed you to go through them natural circumstances because I'm trying to shift you from a place of being dependent on people to being dependent on me. Because, see, the scripture says, amen, that after she told him that uh, once the baby's weaned, I'll bring him unto the Lord. And the Bible says down in verse 27, the Bible says, for this child I prayed. And the Lord hath given me my petition, which I have asked him. Therefore, also, I have lent him to the Lord as long as he liveth. He shall be lent to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord there. People of God, hear this in closing. Hear this in closing. I don't care what your past looks like. I don't care what you have been through. I don't care how bad of a story you have. Those circumstances and stories and things that you have been through, every time, God, I, but God, I tried. I gave you my life a million times before and I fell back down. So what? That was meant to propel you and push you. Don't you know that his grace and his mercy is sufficient? Because if he didn't want to give you an opportunity to get saved, you, you should have been dead in the midst of your past. If he didn't love you enough, you should have been missed. You know you done been in some situations, some parties, and you done been around some people, and you done took some substances, and you've done some things that if he didn't, if he didn't love you, if his grace and his mercy wasn't sufficient, you should have been gone. But his grace and his mercy is sufficient because I'm trying to get you to see, come to the place where I need you to separate. I didn't separate that child from the mother because there was something in the natural that that baby needed from that mother. And I needed that even from the mother, amen, I've heard about with children that even with breastfeeding as a, as a mother to a child, it's a supernatural experience. It's something that I can't, you know, a father would never know. God even look and saying not only is it something that the baby needs from the mother, but it's something that the mother needs from him. And I know that you're going to, I know you're going to make good on your promise because you've been through so much. But I need you to open up your eyes and realize it's time. You've been in the midst of these streets and this mess long enough. You've been caught up in these addictions long enough. Long enough. Long enough, long enough. Everybody's standing to your feet. It's time out. It's time out, time out, time out. Time out, time out. If you know that you are in the midst on today, I want you to make your way to the altar. 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 You know that your story and your situation, you know that your story and your situation looks to be too great. But I'm here to tell you, oh God, that God is great. He's calling you out. So what? your family abandoned you? And it seemed like everybody gave up on you. I'm here to tell you it was to propel you into the glory. Oh, it's to propel you to the glory. Oh, come on, put your minds on Jesus. 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 Come on and put your minds on, oh, God, that place where you need to separate. You need to separate. You need to separate. Oh, for his glory to be revealed. Come on, lift your hands. Lift your hands. I feel the spirit of the Lord wanting to work. The spirit of the Lord wanting to work. Lift your hands and put your minds on that place. Lord, I call, oh, God, on you today. Oh, God, I need you on today. Separate me from family. Separate me from friends. Separate me from this job. They don't love me the way I need to be loved. They don't love me the way I need to be loved. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. All to work as you may begin.